Hello and welcome. This is Productive Writing 101, or also Productive Writer 101. Uh, today we will try to summarize the most common issues that writers, copywriters, anyone who is trying to write something, book, novel, uh, even a picture story, even a manga book, whatever it is, comics, you still the creative person who needs some sort of special tools to help you not just get started, but also to help you achieve results. And uh, at the beginning, I would like to thank you, everybody who showed interest into this workshop. Uh, why do we call it workshop? Because at the end, you will have a set of tools, a set of uh, exercises and things to do, like a take home for you. Uh, you just will be able to sit, plan it all for yourself and actually become more productive. So today I will be sharing uh, tools and exercises that are working for me personally and that also work for my clients. I uh, help people with productivity. I mostly work with entrepreneurs and solopreneurs and quite a few of them were also person sort of creative part of the self-creative hobby and that hobby actually uh, helps them at work because they feel like they're not just uh, you know going out and uh, trying to make most money but they also have something for themselves like the part of the soul which I believe you will agree what writing is for every writer, whatever your publisher published already, or you just trying to finish something that, that you want to publish. So my team put up together this short presentation that should help you, uh, you know, visualize a couple of things, uh, summarize, and also I will be providing you the exercises that are not uh, summarized on slides, and every time you feel like you're watching this recording and you feel you need more help, uh, I encourage you to contact me personally. You can do it on Facebook. If we met on Facebook through the promo of this workshop, or you can always email me, lucy at wkgstrategy.com. Anytime, free of charge. I do want to connect with a lot of authors. I have this passion of helping authors to and block their potential, not just actors block, which is classically considered one of the uh, you know, top problems for writers, but also other things that actors, actors feel that are like cornerstones that like a sub factors that are slowing them down. And I will actually summarize some of them for you because uh, my team have conducted research and the results were quite interesting. We went through uh, a different writers group. We went through all our past and current clients that are also having great side hustle uh, as a writer, copywriter, and different specialization. And we asked a few questions. So the question was, why are you writing? Why do you want to write and publish the book, manga book, the picture book, children's book, uh, self-help book, novel, memoir, whatever it is? Why is that? Why do we have this calling? And 60% of our responders at first, they say the main reason is for them is desire to sh just share their story, just to tell their story and their experience. And that is amazing. And i uh, always excited to read those. Over the years, one of my favorite journals for reading was actually uh, memoirs and especially biographies. And I don't remember when I was 11, my favorite was biography of Nicola Paganini and then Alfred Nobel. I just, and we had that series of book, uh, it was called, it was in Russian, and it was called The Life of Famous uh, People, something like that. And that just was my absolute favorite. So I applaud you for sharing and writing your story to share with others. That's amazing. Now, the second reason 
after share was monetizing their hobby. So they write them basically to create this extra income source for them to feel more comfortable with their life. And that was 55% of responders actually say that they want to monetize, they want to make money over it. And this is one of the main reasons the way why they're writing. Uh, this is great too. I was actually expecting this percentage will be higher, but it's only 55%. 19% say they are pursuing writing professionally after getting their degree because they feel it's their only calling. This is what they want to do with their life professionally. Now, we all know when we start as a writer, as a painter, something this creatively, the family will be criticizing a lot and uh, it will be hard because. Frankly, it is hard to make a living from something creative like that. It is hard to keep your bills paid. And historically, if you look at lives of the famous writers and uh, painters and all the creative, famous personalities, they've been struggling over years a lot financially because paying bills regularly with regular income is not easy. There are success stories as probably... Uh, every time we're bringing up this topic, what I hear is that Joan Rowling made it and she's fine. She's comfortable with her money. Yes, yeah, she got sales from merchandise. She got a great deal. It wasn't easy for her either. If you read her uh, interviews and story, uh, she was sending out her manuscript to many places and had many rejections before she heard yes. And they, her first, uh, their first uh, advance was I believe around 1,300 pounds, which is not much. It's less than 200 US dollars. And then she got into royalties and the mistake their publishers made, they didn't include ebook rights into the contract. So those were directly, went directly to her later. And all the franchise and all the uh, empire created after that, all the rights sold for movie making and everything. That was right. But... We know one, two, three, you can count on how many actors you know that made it that way, that successfully. So you can actually say that um, you will be living off your writing unless you take on the gigs as copywriter and something else or you have a daytime job. Most of the times you simply can. 78% uh, of our respondents say they want to try writing because just why not to try? I just want to try to see if I can write something, publish, and have it as a copy or maybe later as a career. That's wonderful. And 93%, they say that they want to create uh, additional income source for themselves. So they're writing more commercially, and the person is as a, a person it as a, a additional income source as their side hustle, if you wish. What is impressive today that every year we have over one million books published around the world in all kinds of terms. <coughs> Excuse me. And we know that there are a lot of self-published books nowadays. It becomes more and more popular. Not it is actually because it becomes easier and Many times it's actually free, but also because more people start to realize that they want to try to do something else with their life, they want to try to write. And if you are one of them, this is very great. And I hope this workshop will help you navigate a couple of major struggles that after usually experiencing. So what are the biggest struggles that actors experience in every day. According to our survey, the, uh, the answers we could put in two major categories. The first will be monetization, and the second one will be productivity and accountability. Monetization also covers what is popular right now, say, as in Facebook, writers group, uh, marketing. I don't know how to market my book. I can't get enough sales. I can't do this and that. Basically, when we talk about monetization, uh, every author want to be able to cover living expenses from writing. Uh, it's like a big dream. 
and it doesn't always happen, but at least having it as a side household with significant income, like residual income, it's wonderful. It is amazing. Once you're able to achieve this level, it is great. Unfortunately, maybe beginning, uh, many beginner actors publishing will not get enough income. Statistically, many, most actors making less than $500 a book a year and $500 a year, I mean, even if you live in the cheapest country, we you know it's not enough to support your even most moderate living style. Uh, the monetization also covers that part of recognized. We want to be our work to be recognized. We want to have good feedbacks. This is one of the also most painful processes when we publish our book and we get it. E, not that good uh, feedback and a comment or something, it hurts at first, and it's hard to overcome, and we feel like, how can someone be say like this? And we try to argue with them, so with ourselves, our book is great, and this is great, and this is great. Most of the times, actually, uh, feedbacks can be considered the uh, way to improve your future works. And I don't like bad feedbacks myself. I mean, we had one of the books published with quite controversial feedbacks. I don't agree to most of them. Of course, I'm the writer, I'm the actor, and I actually illustrated that book. So yeah, it hurts, but it is a part of the process. As soon as you recognize that those are the pieces that break the parts of the process, and you stop taking it on this personally, it's terribly hard. I understand you very well. But still, as soon as you will, uh, will be getting it too close to your heart and uh, not just, you know, consider this a bit being a part of the, your journey of your growth, it will be affecting your own way because every time you get upset, it will affect your productivity. And that's not something you want. It will be affecting your productivity everywhere. Once you get into... Um, once you've been affected by bad feedback or something, or you get angry with something, uh, you probably, if you look back and think about it, you see that your productivity changes and you slow down, you put off more tasks, you are more tend to procrastinate or not deliver the quality of work that you can deliver. Uh, and when we go to the second category, if you can see from this slide, productivity and accountability, uh, after the block is one of the well, most well-known problems in terms of productivity for writers. And then second is procrastination. And then many authors say, I simply don't have enough time. And the others say, I can't concentrate. So there is a lack of focus. And those are the big problems. But there are ways to work, work make it work for you. And I will tell you some of them today, but let's go back to monetization first. Whatever your goal is in terms of monetization, in terms of market money, making money from your writing, uh, let's separate it here. If you are a person career as a professional writer in terms of writing articles, uh, text for the website or anything else, white papers, that's a completely different story. Here we more summarize like for writers that are writing and publishing books, pictures, put in picture books and code and manga stories, all of that. And once you do that, uh, monetization comes to the different level if you self-publish especially, because if you go with publishing house, not one, not vanity press, those are not very really much working for you. It, well, unfortunately, Vantage of press could be a pretty good concept, business concept, but unfortunately, many of those businesses just take your money and the result, delivered result actually not very impressive. Yeah, they do some sort of marketing for you. Uh, you do get some sort of sales, but still, that's not what you want because you want recognition, you want real push for your book. And Vanity Press, Obviously, they want to take on more actors because this is the way for them to make more money. So when it comes to monetization, especially with self-publishing or any, even vanity press, if you want to or the publishing, but not professional writing for the articles and all kinds of things like not copywriting, uh, being able to cover living expenses, one of the 
biggest dreams for many actors. What do you need for that? You obviously need to work hard. It is a lot of work. Even if you have a publisher, it's still a lot of work. You will be working on the concept of the book, on the structure of the text, sometimes illustrations, and then you will be working with your editor to implement all the changes that uh, editor suggested, or your publisher will say commercially it will be better if we twist it this way or that way. And let's be frank, those are the parts that are hard to hear for any actor, simply because uh, our books are like our children, and we're really, really, really proud of when we finished it, and we're really, really behind that concept and the style that we uh, created that idea that we try to share. Mm, and at the beginning, it's actually hard to understand why you're saying that I need to change it that way. I don't agree. I want it this way. This is how I see it. And that's the problem for many creative people. If we talk, uh, for example, about designers, let's step back from writing. Uh, creative people, designers, when you, for your business, uh, hiring designer, and you need and you need that designer to deliver some blog or to deliver some business style or something, they will give you options. And if you don't agree with the style, if you don't agree with this or that or that, they will be like, oh, I see it that way. And they might be really, really resistant to deliver any changes, if some. And sometimes if you really don't agree with the concept, uh, that will be a problem. So it is hard to work with creative people and it is hard for creative people to work with publishers, with your marketing company, whatever it is, classical publisher, vanity publisher, or the marketing agency that helps you just market your book. It will not be easy and you need to be ready to work on yourself too. So not just you're working hard on your book, on text, on concept, on structure, illustration, everything. Then you're working with editor, then you work with publishers to make sure that that uh, concept is commercially profitable, that that concept works um, for current market. Because if publisher comes back to you and say, okay, this is great novel, that's wonderful, but if we had this sort of character or this sort of environment, those are the trend and things like that, and I can market it better. And you will be thinking, oh no, how can I do that? I have this vision, I have this wonderful story. How can even they, how they even can say that? Well, it's their job to make you successful. That's why they try to suggest to you changes that are, that are, uh, might not be easy for you. So whatever it is, being able to cover living expenses or creating a residual income stream for yourself, hard work are is is essential part of the process, being able to listen to feedback and work harder on uh, the book, the story. Uh, the second part, your focus is the third part and determination. So whenever it gets hard for you, Think, uh, think about why are you doing it. So whatever your reasons, the reasons that we considered in previous slides, whatever your reason is for writing this book for yourself, to share your story, to monetize it, to create additional income stream, or to make a good job out of it, whatever it is, keep that focus like in front of your eyes all the time. This will help you uh, not to get you know, off the course because you don't want it. When we talk about self-publishing and creating a residual income stream from your writing, uh, that's not an easy part. And here you can see on the second point, uh, such thing as marketing strategy is one of the essential parts. And creating marketing strategy by yourself might not be easy because simply it's not your specialty. And sometimes for many beginner authors, uh, hiring somebody to do this is not an option due to the budget concerns. So, but marketing strategy is important. What I'm suggesting you to do for the marketing strategy, I'll show you the process uh, a bit later, but you need to be able to create those basics for yourself. The problem is when someone publishes something, they belong to all those writers too, 
and then say, and, and there are many uh, platforms right now when you can put your book for free, you can put it out for free. It's wonderful. People read it. I enjoy it. If your goal recognition only, that works for you. But if you want to make money, at least just to, at least a bit, not necessarily covering cover your living expenses with it, that's not going to work. So for recognition, this will be part of the PR publishing with the three platforms. But for making money, you need to have your marketing strategy. If you cannot get help, you will need to create it yourself and execute it yourself too. Now, uh, there is no such thing as free marketing. I want you to forget about that. Free marketing does not exist. You go online, you go on Facebook, you go to writer's group, you publish your book. Here it is my new book. The cover is great. This is great. Here, photo with my printed copy. That's wonderful, but it's not sales. That is not marketing. That is not sales. That might give you a couple books sold, but most of the times it won't give you anything, unfortunately. I know it's hard to hear, but posting something online, social media and expecting your friends or the colleagues from a specialist group to buy those copies for you because here I am, I finally finished, I'm so proud of myself and this is why you have to buy it. That does not work. Um, marketing only works when it's complex. Uh, it's not free. Um, it's not cheap, actually. And... Uh, you need to account for many things. You need to account, account who is your prospective reader is. You need to account for uh, where the reader uh, works, how it be, he or she behaves online, so where to find them and how to reach them. This is why actually one of the reasons why KDP is so popular because they published with Amazon. You actually, the prospective was reaching out to millions of readers globally without additional efforts. But again, publishing is for free, just publishing is for free, it doesn't give much sales. You still need your marketing strategy. So how to create this marketing strategy to monetize it? Uh, first, you need to start from research and then from the strategy. The research is exactly what I mentioned right now, the moment ago, sorry, uh, the research of how of where your customer lives, works, how they behave, what they do for their life, for work, hobbies, and everything. So, for example, if you, if your book is self help book, how to diet better, how to lose weight, that's going to be self help book. So where are you going to go? You're going to find your prospective reader. All the sources, platforms, online, digitally, uh, that are uh, offering similar services and that are aimed to connect these people to discuss uh, to discuss uh, problem with dieting. So that will be your strategy for research. And based on this research, you form strategy, how to reach out to those people. Those will be your prospective readers. Same with any other book. Even if your book just basic memoir or novel, uh, let's go again deeper. Your novel is sci-fi novel, something on ecology or something, fictional characters, hobbits and everything. There are groups that will be reading this type of books and there are groups who won't be reading this type of books. For me, for example, I don't like sci-fi much, so I won't be even looking at those books. Now, when you go through classical publishing and the classical global or local distribution, you're not worried about these things. But again, you still, you or your publishing paying for those marketing. If you're with classical publisher, it's wonderful. They do all the marketing work for you, uh, including the research, including strategy development, and including execution. But if you don't have a luxury of working with classical publisher, that's on you. And that's on you to research uh, develop that strategy and execute it. And again, it's not free. And most of the time, it's not cheap. So once you have this research done, the strategy prepared, if you need more help, you can email me after the workshop and I will help you. Uh, after you have strategy, based on the strategy, you have combinations, you prepare plan, have plan how to reach out to those prospective leaders 
and plan how to execute it. Those might be online ads, those might be book signings in the stores, those might be reaching out to specific bookstore networks or uh, specific uh, specialized hobby groups or, or book clubs. Whatever it is, that will be your detailed plan and you will be working in execution. Next thing, that's not the end. So once you've had research strategy plan and you're executing it, that's still not the end because you need to control the execution and you need to be flexible because once you start execution, executing those combinations, uh, you need to be flexible in terms of adjusting your budgets because some of the combination will be working better than others. And you can see that, for example, I invest some indoors into this marketing combination and it gives me $700 in sales. But if I invest this sound and door into this marketing combination, and um, even if I stop that previous combination, it will not be affected. This gives me $1,500 in sale. Those are different things because the second scenario, you're making more profit. You're actually making profit the first scenario, you're not making any. So controlling result, analyzing your return on investment in every direction, every marketing combination, and flexibly adjusting it. This is the, uh, the third part of this process. And another part will be creativity. Uh, why creativity? Because every marketing and PR campaign uh, should include some sort of creativity. So for some books, going through influencers is an option. For others, is not. For some books, going to, through the book clubs is an option. For others, is not. Uh, for some books, sending out copies for cele to celebrities is an option. For others, it won't be. And let's be frank, none of the books will be successfully sold from you just posting those uh, messages on social media, Facebook, LinkedIn. If you just go and post and you expect, here, is I am, here I am, successful writer. I have my book published with KDP and I'm sharing it online with social media. Well, uh, unfortunately, that's not the way to monetize your work, whatever your work is, and writing is not an exception. Uh, the writing just requires more creative approach for marketing strategy than many other businesses. So let's go to the other part. When we talk about productivity and accountability, the major issues that we discussed before, the classical will be the, my favorite actor's blog. I hear it all the times people I start working with. Uh, usually those are entrepreneurs who already run business, but they decide that they have story to share, as we say, it's one of the statistics, or they want an extra income source and they want to write their book and publish it. Uh, and they say, sit with this with a laptop or with a piece of paper and say, I don't know how to start. Or they wrote the piece of chapter and I don't know what to do. I can't move it. I can seem to start it. I can twist it. I can find a way how to put it all on paper. Well, there are a couple ways. I've heard from many writers that they made it for their job. If that's your only activity, and um, for example, you're not having six kids in the house and you don't need that much time in there, uh, you don't have a day job, you don't have business to run, so make it your job. Nine to five, I'm writing. If that's not an option, adjust it, be flexible. Make it your job to write from 10 to uh, midnight, 10 p.m. to midnight every day. After you've done all your chores in the house, you've taken care of kids, you have done everything for your job, make sure that every day, Monday to Friday, you sit it from 10 p.m. to the midnight and you write, no matter what. You just do it. There will be no excuse. There should be no distraction. Make sure that everybody in your house knows that those are your writing hours. And there is no exception and no one can disturb you unless it's absolute emergency. Uh, there is no such thing like mom, dad, make me a sandwich or something like that. There will be no such thing. Of, Here is an, an urgent task that you need to accomplish right now. No, just make sure that those are your writing hours. and. Most of the times we create an excuses ourselves. I can't do it today. Uh, I feel weak or I don't feel like it. Or I better go out with friends and party. Well, if you're going to party, it's one thing. But if you're going to finish that book, that's another thing. So 
So whatever you want to do with your life, make sure that you're working it, right? And dedicate and specific hours for this work or writing work is your way to get it done. Now, another, uh, I wouldn't say secret tool, but it's the exercise and tool that I found that helps many of my clients on how to overcome efforts of block is putting in the structure on paper or if you're writing on your laptop in a file. If you can't start, you don't see how to make this book work, put in this structure of the book on the paper first. That actually works well on me. Sometimes there were times I will sign contract for the book and I know that my deadline will be in six months and I know I need to be writing every day. And at first it was so hard just to sit and start writing. So what I make sure I will do, that I will sit for every day and think of structure. And after the third book, it's actually become easier. You just sit and uh, you structure the book. Now, those were self-help and business book. Those are easier to structure than, for example, your novel or memoir. But still, you can put it on paper what you want to share, like a checkpoint, or uh, also you can use a structure uh, like a uh, memory map, uh, like pieces, the phrases, the two words, writing about this, about that, about this, and like a cloud of text that will be a reminder for you what you're writing about. And when you put this cloud of text on the paper, if it's like novel, uh, you will notice that after looking at it carefully that you can actually create the structure out of it. What goes first, what comes after it, and how you're going to end it, and how you proceed with transition through the story. So putting structure on paper is actually the greatest tool to overcome that as well. It works almost for everybody. Now, the second problem is procrastination. When it comes to something that we want to do, but we not necessarily or absolutely have to. I mean, for many writers, it's a problem even with the ongoing contracts. Even after spending our advance, uh, we tend to, ah, that's wonderful, I will finish it. I'm good at it, I will finish it in two weeks at the end of the term. That doesn't really work like that because you want to deliver good work. Procrastination is a problem. What can you do about it? You should create those habits and discipline. The habits of discipline for a writer is making sure that the time that you allocated for writing is uninterrupted. It's making sure you, that you're not creating excuses for yourself. I'm not, not writing because I want to read something else, not writing because I watched that movie. Those excuses shouldn't work for you. Uh, it, sometimes it's hard to overcome what you want. What you want to try to do is to keep focus on the goal, the end goal. And end goals often actually comes back to these three things in monetization. So you want to cover your living expenses by writing, or you want a residual income from writing, or you want a recognition. So once you once you keep this picture in your mind here thinking, yes, I want it badly. If you really want it badly, so this is how you start overcoming your procrastination because you know that that extra hour of writing would get you closer to your dream. You know that you need many hours to finish that work. And once you have that goal in your mind, once you have that picture of success in your mind, this is how you do it. Now, this another problem with productivity and accountability for writer is lack of time. And I actually hear it often from entrepreneurs and solopreneurs that I work with, uh, simply saying, I don't have enough time. Well, you have 24 hours in a day, right? And I often hear, I want to have 48 hours in a day. Well, A, it's impossible. B, you don't need it because you already have more than enough time. Whatever it is, even if you have daytime jobs that takes you eight hours, even if you commute to work and your commute takes two hours from your day, even if you come home, you have kids jumping on you, 
five kids, but it's all crazy and it needs cleaning up and the house needs cleaning up and they're cooking and this and that and that. Uh, lack of time is not a problem once to start applying um, different kind of productivity techniques. And the reason there is no secret recipe that works for any one of us is because it's individual. We all are different when it comes to productivity and accountability. For some of us, uh, become, getting some things done faster is an option. For others, delegating most of the things is an option. Uh, for some of us, there are techniques of managing time that, we, that are very, very effective. For others, task management systems that will be effective. And for some of us, having digital tools like uh, for example project management system where you put all your tasks like or task management system there are great tool that I use that is free called to doist that works great you just categorize your tasks the, I, I actually put there everything and my household chores and everything so every morning I wake up in the morning I'm unfun- dysfunctional absolutely before I got my three cups of coffee I can do anything. And this thing helps a lot because I have a list of tasks in front of my eyes where I can see what are my household chores I need, what I need to do for today. Do I need to get groceries or stop at pharmacy, uh, run some sort of other errands, dry cleaning and everything. And then I also have my work tasks. And then I also have tasks related to our books. If you have it all in front of your eyes, you're getting more organized. If you want to do it with a piece of paper, I use piece of paper myself. It helps a lot. Uh, and again, the reason why there is no one unique recipe of how to do it because it's very individual. Some of us need piece of paper. Some of us need digital tools. Some of us need the combination of both, like time, time management techniques or mobile app with uh, reminders or a mobile app with tasks or a special notebook or both. And actually it changes over time. So do not, don't be surprised if today you're using that task management system and you're 100% satisfied with it. Uh, and it works great and you see improvement in all parts of your life, including writing. And the two, three months later or a year later, you see that it's not enough or you just need something different and you switch. We all change, we all, our brains change how they work and it's normal it's actually great that you're changing and you're adjusting so keeping yourself organized will uh, help you to overcome that problem of lack of time you learn to manage time you learn to organize tasks you learn to manage routines and when we come to routines i often hear the things like my routines mostly will be house related or my routines will be like absolute nonsense like I need to drive kids to classes I need to do like errands around errands every day and then I don't have any time for anything else you always can find time because for example for errands uh, you can delegate uh, sit with sit with your family in the evening and say, okay, that's been enough. Let's organize it differently. I'm going to need some help because I want, for example, I want to write the book and I'm going to need some help with these tasks so you can pick up kids or kids you can help with dishes after dinner and I just go and start writing because that will be my writing hour or I'm going to need this and that. How else you can delegate? You can hire somebody to do so if your budget allows. Uh, please, I encourage you to do so. Sometimes calling the cleaning company to clean your home is just a blessing because you get in this extra two, three hours for your work or for your writing. And it's wonderful. So there are many other techniques, actually. Sometimes we get to the point when we look at all those tasks on paper or on our application and we say, okay, that's too much. I can't do it anymore. So sometimes what you can do, you hit the pause. You say, this is my day off. I can do it anymore this way. But what I encourage you to try when you feel that way, not just hit the pause, but erase and redo. Uh, I call it clean slate exercises. 
and clean slate exercises where you take those tasks, where, for example, you have everything on paper, all your tasks for a day, uh, you just throw it away. And then the next day, after you got your, uh, I call it self-motivational routines, you do something that really, really, really empowers you. Like, for example, if you enjoy walking, that really empowers you, helps you to clear your mind, do that. Or you want to move you or meet with friends, whatever it is, go do that. And the next day you come back and sit with this fresh piece of paper or the fresh uh, set of tasks on your task management system. And you're writing down, and you may see that you're writing it down in absolutely different orders, or some things can be reorganized differently, or something you don't actually have to do. You don't need them. You don't need them right now. You don't need them because you can delegate, or you're just actually not in the point when you need to do it. So you will see that that exercise, clean slate exercise, helps a lot. Now there is another problem with productivity and accountability. It's called lack of focus. And it's actually connected to all three other points. It's connected to author's block, it's connected to lack of time, it's connected to procrastination. Lack of focus can uh, slow us down everywhere. So if you feel that you can concentrate, I suggest you to take that couple hours of or day of and focus on your motivational and self-motivational routines. And why we differentiate motivational and self-motivational routines? Because motivational routines may be something uh, that you do with others and self-motivational may be something that works specifically for you. Maybe you need your quiet time with a book and a cup of coffee or maybe you need a night out with friends and uh, parties or whatever it is, and it works for you. And after that, you feel like a new person. You feel like you can do a lot again. You can focus better. So please do that, whatever it is, whatever your motivational, self-motivational routine is, and it helps, you should try. If you haven't found it yet, try different things. And make sure you're noticing how you feel after those activities, because it's important. Your writing comes within. So whatever you are writing, you're writing like from your heart. That, that's the actually most difficult part about writing, the creativity. The problem of creative people is that we tend to like, we want to splash it all, all from within and we want to put it on paper and we want to let it go into the world and it's wonderful but it's also I have a tendency to like empty us for a moment if we don't get to the point when we feel like we it's enough done in that uh, period of time it can be devastating so make sure you have those motivational safe motivational routine and also another thing is support system many actors I here uh, having problem with support system because they're not getting support from family. We often hear from family why you do that. You want to make money out of this, focus on something that is more profitable. Or we can hear the not supportive speech from our spouses or the boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it is. You need to have somebody in your life that is on your side. Support system is important, whatever you do, and it's actually a big part of productivity in any activity. Uh, so if you don't have in your family, I'm sorry to hear that. If you don't have in your life right now, you can always find. Because the, right now, with all the communication uh, tools and digital tools like social media and communication apps, with all the groups uh, and clubs available online, we can easily connect with like-minded individuals. We can reach out and connect to the people we feel most uh, share. We share most with. We can stay in touch. We can encourage each other, and that's a huge power. It will help your productivity a lot. You will like start flying again. It is very important. So if you don't have in your life right now, try to find it, even if just online. It's already a big step. 
So productivity and accountability can be also summarized uh, with balance. We all tend to be looking for the balance. We want to balance work, life, and relationship. That will be classical balance model. But when it comes to creative parts that we can, uh, we're trying to implement in our lives as hobby or as a side hustle, uh, writing and other, like uh, crafting something, I don't know, crochet, whatever it is, and you enjoy it, you need to find balance. And again, finding balance comes from your time management. It comes from your uh, satisfaction with your not just support system, but also time management again. Uh, you want to be satisfied from your day-to-day -day activities. So if you don't feel like it works, reorganize your routines, implement your new time management techniques, work on your self-motivational routines. And you will see in, with time, I mean, it's not an instant. It doesn't happen in a week. But once you start trying this and that, different exercises, different tools, you will see that actually you start changing your life. And in uh, three or six weeks, uh, our clients start seeing results that are actually impressive because they're getting this clarity. Like, I, I don't have to be stuck with those routines or I don't have to be stuck with uh, no support system for the things that I love doing. I love writing, but I don't see support with my family. That's not the end of the world. You can find support. Yeah, we can choose the family, but you can always make more friends and connect with groups of people that are sharing our passion. And that actually very empowering. Uh, you, our creative brains, when we write and we're creative people, our creative brains are different. They work differently. This is one of the reasons why productivity and accountability are so individual. There is no such thing that's like, I will give you the formula today and you go and you're good with your time management skills and you're good with your routines and you're good with your scheduling and everything. There is no such unique formula because we're all different. And when it comes to creative brains, the brains of writers, it's even uh, different than anybody else, different from entrepreneurs, it's different from tech people. It's very different. Uh, and it's beautiful because we all need, need all kinds of people. We all need recognition for the things that we love doing. And that's what I encourage you to do. I want you to try to be yourself. I want you to be ready to be yourself and try some of the exercises I gave you here. If you need more of those, please reach out to me, uh, lucy at wkgstrategy.com. Uh, there are paid, ses paid uh, sessions that I offer for uh, productivity and individual strategy, but just reaching out, I'm not charging anything, just reaching out if I have exercise that I feel that will help you or tool that I feel will help you, I will be happy to share. So I want you to start working on becoming a better version of yourself but still be yourself. I want you to understand that be yourself is important for your work, for your life, and for your writing. Because when we write, we are very passionate. We're writing from within, we're sharing from within. And that's not an easy job, but it is an important one. All great books came from very, very uh, unique people from very unique brains, unique individuals. All great books came from unique vision. Many great uh, creative people, writers and painters, they have not seen much support from family. and They were struggling financially. Some were struggling with, we know, with alcohol or something. There are many, those unfortunate stories like hard childhood and everything. But whatever we experience or we did not experience, we're all unique. And I want you to find a way to embrace your individuality, organize your time, find time for yourself and for your writing, and share it with the world because it's worth it. You are unique, you are valuable, and please do share it with the world. Reach out for me to me to the email I gave you. And if you need more help, I'll be happy to. That was wonderful having you all here. 
I know it's a short workshop. I just wanted to summarize the basics for, especially for productivity and some for marketing strategy, because those are the biggest part that writers struggle with. More detailed work, we can always deliver individually. Thank you very much for your time. And I'm wishing you a wonderful day. There will be a recording of this workshop. I can share, just message me. Thank you.